Hi, Professor Sills here, and um, I want to take a few minutes out. I'm going to adjust my mic a little bit just to make sure you can hear me. There's a lot of background noise here in my morning office at the uh, Dunkin' Donuts. And um, <clears throat> I want to talk with you about what's happening uh, in the weather department. Uh, really kind of appropriate considering you're in a meteorology course. And um, tie it in a little bit with what you're currently studying. Um, you're, you're currently looking at seasons, in fact wrapping up uh, a unit on seasons, and um, you may have noticed that the sun on a daily basis seems to be getting a little lower in the sky um, each day. The days are getting shorter each day, and hopefully you realize that that's been happening since June 21st. So why has it not been cooling off since June 21st? Well, there's this concept, and it, it was talked about in the unit, that you have to look at uh, climate like a, um, a profit and loss statement, a budget. If you have more energy coming in from the sun than is going out to space, then you're going to keep warming up. So even though the sun begins to get lower in the sky, uh, the midday sky, each day starting June 21, and even though... Um, and even though the days got shorter starting after June 21st, the weather continued to warm up. And it did so because until about July 21st, there's more energy coming in than is going out. So the conditions in the northern hemisphere have to continue to warm up. So what about after July 21st? Well, after July 21st, that progression continues. It's not that anything starts around July 21. It simply continues. The sun is getting lower and lower in the sky, especially in the northern latitudes. You know, in Alaska, the change can be as much as 20 minutes a day uh, when you're in the rapid season of September and October and November. They go from a 21-hour day in parts of Alaska to a three-hour day in terms of daylight. So there's going to be a big change every day. In New Jersey, it's more like five minutes or less each day. It's hardly noticeable on a day-to-day -day basis. But when you compare week to week, now look at where we are right now. Look at what time the sun is rising in daylight savings time and compare it to what it was a month ago. So obviously our mornings are dark longer and our evenings are getting dark earlier. So obviously the amount of daylight hours is decreasing. Well, not only is that happening, but the solar elevation is decreasing, which means the amount of incoming solar radiation is decreasing. And we're going to talk a lot about that in just a moment. Before we get to the mid-latitudes, let's talk about the tropics. I have here a um, latest National Hurricane Center uh, visual. You can get it at the National Hurricane Center page. And you can see Rena and another area of interest. Now, let's look at Rena. We're not even going to look at the other area of interest. Rena is a storm moving very, very slowly. Its current forward movement is uh, just a few miles per hour, three miles per hour, west-northwest of three. So it's moving very slowly, and its maximum sustained winds are over 100 miles per hour. It's in a great location for further strengthening. This could become a Category 4 or even a Category 5. But notice the forecast. It's going to hook and it's going to weaken. Now, why? The hook seems to be spuriously low in latitude, whereas the hook usually occurs further north, somewhere up in the mid-latitudes, up in the Gulf, or further up into the United States. Of course, because of the westerlies and because of the Coriolis effect, that was from your last exam. Now, this hook may occur because there's going to be a great big dip in the jet stream uh, over the next couple of days, which gives parts of New Jersey their first chance or shot at snow uh, within the next few days. And that's unusually early for October. Uh, but that'll give you an idea of how cold it's going to get in New Jersey. Now, um, the hook is also going to be accompanied by rapid weakening. Why? Remember what you learned. Remember what you learned. So the hook is occurring because there's a strong dip in the jet stream that's going to be happening. And, um, yeah, um, I'm in a Dunkin' Donuts, so there's a lot of stuff going on. Deal with it. <laughs> anyway, um, in addition to that, if you check Intellicast or some of the other visuals, the satellite visuals particularly, 
infrared and water vapor, you'll see there's a lot of dry air and there's a tremendous amount of wind shear up in the Gulf here. Meaning, as you know, high wind shear is going to blow apart a tropical cyclone. So that's something that you need to think about as you watch what the forecasts are calling for. Now, interestingly, if we go to Weather Bell, uh, you've heard me talk about this before, it shows the forecast storm tracks, and they're all over the place. There are a few of them pushing it out into the uh, lower Gulf. There are some of them that push it east, south of Florida. One of them pushes it straight across Florida. Time will tell where this thing ends up and whether or not it's of any significance to Florida. I happen to be right about here in Florida. So yeah, I got an eye on it, but it doesn't, you know, it would have to come very close for it to be a real issue here. Well, so that's what's going on with the tropics. Now, what about the mid-latitudes? I want to call your attention to weather.com, the weather channel. And on weather.com, what you need to see here is this is uh, today, October 25. Uh, you can see fairly mild air from New York City South as evidenced by the color scheme. Very warm air across Texas. Interestingly, there's some very deep Arctic air which is invading over the northern Rockies. And they're expecting snow, I think, as far south as Denver. Notice that Denver's forecast today is 59 degrees. What I want you to pay attention to is what happens over the next day or two to the amount of blue on this map. Now remember, particularly in the polar regions, the solar elevation has been getting lower and lower, which means a pool of cold air has been building up over the Arctic. That pool of cold air is what brings New Jersey its Arctic outbreaks from time to time. Arctic air and continental polar air. And that's what's headed right for New Jersey at this point. And that's, that's a pretty good bet. So let's look at tomorrow. So tomorrow, Thursday, <clears throat> what we see when the map reloads, we see New York City a little warmer. We see the air warmer here on the East Coast but we see Denver drop from 59 to 33 with snow and we see that blue expanding. Now watch what happens on the next day. And this will be Thursday. We're going to let this thing load. So here's Thursday and I want you to see something carving out here. You can see the blue across New England, bordering on New York, 10 degree drop for New York between Wednesday and Thursday. You can see the blue here representing lower temperatures. And if we carve this out, it makes a giant U. That's called a trough. That's called a trough. That is the center of the colder air working its way south and eastward into the United States and will occupy the entire area through New England and into the New York area particularly when we look by Friday. And that means the opportunity for uh, some mixed rain and snow in New Jersey, maybe snow in the farthest northwest regions of New Jersey, and snow up into New England uh, for, I believe, Thursday night is when that's most likely to occur. Probably not as a big storm, but nevertheless very early for this occurrence. So let's go to day four. And this would be Friday. And you can see on Friday, temperatures in New York barely get over 50 degrees. You continue to see this U in the atmosphere. And that's part, by the way, of the trough, which will, any storm that gets up into the Gulf is going to be shunted eastward very quickly. I doubt it'll come up the coast, but it'll be shunted eastward very quickly. So you can see the cool air and the effect of it. And again, very, very early in the year for this to be happening. So I just wanted you to see how things tie together, how these change in seasons that we're engaging in right now results in cold air coming southward from Canada, and that's when we get our cold polar outbreaks, and that's exactly what is about to happen in New Jersey over the next three, four days. And if there is enough moisture, there will be a little bit of snow on Thursday night in um, parts of northern New Jersey, particularly northwestern New Jersey.